Good evening everyone, this is Dr. Rostenberg and tonight I'm going to talk to you a little bit about methylation and how to treat it and what you need to do to understand what these genes are doing inside of your body. So one gene by itself uh, isn't the um, main reason why we get sick. It's the combination of all of the factors in our life, uh, but looking at methylation and looking at genetics is a frontier and it's offering insights into how our bodies work that we, what we couldn't have otherwise. And what I'm going to share with you represents um, a great deal of study on my own part um, into different genes that show up on the mthfrsupport.com uh, genetic report that is used um, with the 23andMe um, raw data. So many of you listening will understand what that means. If not, just uh, email us and uh, or go to mthfrsupport.com for more information. Uh, tonight we're talking about COMT and MAO. And what I want to bring up uh, in our discussion is how these two SNPs affect our brain. And you need to know that there is a difference between serotonin and dopamine and adrenaline or epinephrine. Okay, so the words epinephrine and adrenaline, those are used interchangeably in America. They say adrenaline and the rest of the world, it's epinephrine, but they're the same thing. You're looking at a neuron. Actually, you're looking at the connection between two neurons, and they know basically that there's more connections in our brain than there are stars in the sky. So this is you know, happening all over inside of our uh, nervous system. But serotonin is shown here, and what you notice is that these little vesicles hold the neurotransmitter, and they are released, and they act on the neuron next to it, and then they go back into the presynaptic neuron. That, that's, you don't need to get too technical with the anatomy here, but we, what you need to know is that serotonin doesn't have COMT involved in it in any way. Now you're looking at dopamine, and now you're looking at adrenaline or epinephrine, and both of these are catecholamines, and that's why they have to be broken down with catecholamine methyl transferase, C-O-N-T. And the reason this becomes important is when the COMT SNP is present, it is a reduction in the speed of that process. Some SNPs speed up, some SNPs slow down. MAO SNPs speed up in the brain. COMT SNPs slow down, not just in the brain and other parts of the body, that, which we'll show in other, um, in other videos. But um, what we need to know here is that when the brain releases adrenaline or dopamine, and these SNPs are present, those neurochemicals are going to be stronger in that person than somebody else. So someone with COMT genetics here, when they release, let's say, dopamine or, or adrenaline due to a stressful situation, they may have anxiety, they may have tremors, they may have tachycardia, they may have some form of POTS, they may have Raynaud's, they may have all these different types of uh, situations that arise when there's way too many stress hormones in the brain. And the reason why it's affecting them and not the person standing next to them is that the COMT is slowed down. And this is key to understand, that when the COMT is slowed down, that means dopamine stays in the synapse longer. When the drug is in the synapse or the neurotransmitters in the synapse longer, it's going to have a stronger effect. Just keep that in mind. That's why COMT people uh, with those genetics are going to have just a tendency to be anxious and have, you know, uh, a lot of these side effects that come from excess adrenaline and excess uh, anxiety, too many neurotransmitters in the synapse. The other part of the problem is that, well, the MAO enzyme is sped up. 
and I'll show you here on the next page how that can become a problem. So here you're you're sped up here and you're slowed down at the uh, postsynaptic and the presynaptic you're going too fast, postsynaptic you're going too slow. That's an imbalance. We know that MAOB slash A, we're going to use them interchangeably here, are sped up. Uh, we know that MAOA prefers um, serotonin. We know that MAOB uh, doesn't prefer serotonin as much. We're going to use them interchangeably. It might be that MAOB uh, is more effective with dopamine and, and epinephrine and adrenaline. Uh, and MAOA is more effective with serotonin, but for our purposes, we're interchanging them. It is sped up in the brain. It increases with age. So as we age, uh, one of the processes of aging is that our DNA gets a little damaged. And the more damage we accumulate in our DNA, the less quality of the protein we make. This is why our skin wrinkles. This is why our, um, our body changes as we age, because the DNA is breaking down and the Basically, the, the instructions for the body to make a protein change a little bit, and so the protein that's made is not as clean and flexible and sharp as it used to be. And MAOB is in the mitochondria. MAOA is in the mitochondria, and so the mitochondria is under a lot of uh, stress and inflammation, so they can have their DNA broken a lot more than other parts of our body. The moral of the story is if you have MAO genetics and you inherit the uh, SNP on your report, what it means is your MAO enzymes are going faster. If you're 30 years old or you're 60 years old, they're going faster. But if you are if you are an older individual, if you are 60, if you are 70, the, the process of aging itself speeds this up. And you'll see in the next slide why this is a problem. So now what we're looking at is a chart that uh, put together here that explains how dopamine is removed from the body. And when we talk about genetics, we want to know, gosh, how is how do these enzymes affect the processing of chemicals? How do we get chemical A, biochemical A, from the brain into the liver, into the bile, into the urine, and out of our body? This is important. Um, and basically, what you're looking at is, as I was as I was saying, the monoamine. MAO, monoamine oxidase, oxidase, is going faster, and the COMT is going slower. Odds are, given this situation, that dopamine will hit the MAOB first, then it's more likely to go over here into the inflammatory pathway and turn into O, hydrogen peroxide, formaldehyde, and ammonia. So what, what I'm really saying is, when you have these SNPs present, they create an imbalance. And they are going to take your neurotransmitter and they're going to push it into a pathway that is unfriendly, that gives you side effects, that makes you neurotoxic, that makes you have brain fog, makes your memory stop working, makes it hard to sleep, makes it hard to calm down, makes it hard to feel positive feelings. These are common side effects of way too much dopamine getting pushed over here into the inflammatory pathway. Now, the way you stop that like most things with methylation issues, is you use nutrition from plants. And that's what we do with our patients. We figure out what nutrition from the plant kingdom are they lacking because that's what makes our body run. And I'll get into that um, in other videos. But you can see the pathway here is complex. There's lots of different steps. And if you have a slow comped enzyme in your body, you're gonna you there's no way around it. Dopamine has to go through COMT. It's just is it gonna happen first or is it gonna happen second? Or is it gonna get totally, you know, pushed over to this other pathway and turned into something like ammonia, which we'll talk about in other videos, how toxic that can be. So this is the reason why high dopamine levels with people with MAO and COMT SNPs have a lot of neurological symptoms. It's because the dopamine doesn't stay where it should. It goes into an inflammatory pathway that creates neurodegeneration. It's related to Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, all, all kinds of uh, current syndromes. This is just a very similar pathway showing the pathway with epinephrine slash adrenaline. Again, it's almost identical. Dopamine and epinephrine are almost the exact same thing. There's only one chemical reaction different. But you will see here that the COMT and the MAOs are always at play here 
um, trying to, um, you know, they're, they're part of the process of your body metabolizing these hormones. So whenever they're released in your brain, your body has to break them down, and this is the pathway it has to go through. So epinephrine slash adrenaline slash dopamine has a likelihood of becoming ammonia or formaldehyde or hydrogen peroxide and cause damage and destruction to our brain if it's in too high of, too high of levels. So those people, myself included, who have genetic polymorphisms here, there's things we need to do to make sure this process gets balanced. And I'm going to talk about that. That's what I do for people. One more time looking at this, I just want to just leave you with looking at this picture because this is the most important one. What we talked about tonight was presynaptic neurons that are dopamine containing, presynaptic neurons that are adrenaline containing have, think, have very similar enzymes. They have the COMT and they have the MAO. You'll notice over here on the serotonin side, it also has an MAO, but it does not have anything on the postsynaptic side. That's a different situation. We're talking here about dopamine and adrenaline, and what happens is when the SNPs are present, MAO is turning into it. MAO is causing toxins to be produced in the presynaptic neuron. This is why the basal ganglia and the um, you know the the mid the uh, deep middle parts of the brain are destroyed in Parkinson's because that's where the presynaptic neuron is. So the mono, the monoamine oxide, oxidase enzyme is destroying these neurons when it's going too fast. Okay. On the other hand, the COMT is going way too slow, so as the dopamine is spilling out, it's staying here way too long. And this causes, like I mentioned, uh, neurological symptoms. Um, we can, you know, we there's more we can say on that, but we're going to kind of limit it to that for tonight. So when you have the MAO present, you want to slow it down. There's things we can do to do that. When you have the COMT present, we want to speed it up or optimize it. And that's what methyl groups are for. So any methyl transferase enzyme that is too slow, it runs a lot better with an adequate amount of methyl groups. And remember, methyl groups are nothing more than food from plants. Folate is named folate because... It comes from foliage. So this is the you know stuff that our body was meant to run on from the very beginning. And that's going to wrap it up for tonight. I hope this was uh, useful to you. Uh, we'll be doing other videos here shortly covering other SNPs. Um, if you have any questions and you would like my help in understanding how genetics are impacting the health of yours, of yours and, the, and, and your loved ones, please reach out. Um, that's what we do. And uh, thank you very much.